So sadly my multimeter has passed on to multimeter heaven. And it's time to replace it. But there is just so many options out there, all sorts of different price points. Just where do you start? What features do you look for? What do you need or don't need? Ah, oh, the Bryman BM257S. Is it any good? Ah, dude, you should totally check that multimeter out. It's so cool, just like me. I have to wear my eye protection on backwards. That's a cool I am. Well, with a recommendation like that, how could we refuse? I do feel in life you shouldn't judge a book by its cover or a multimeter by the box that comes in because it does look like this has travelled through a time machine. The, the box is a bit psychedelic uh, and it does have some interesting wording. Practical digital multimeter. Mm. But you shouldn't judge the multimeter inside this box by the box it came in. Let's have a look what we get. We get a little user manual. We get some OK leads. Um, it says they're rated for 1000 volts or 10 amps, but they're not silicon, unfortunately. Uh, we also get a K type temperature probe and then the multimeter itself. So, one of the things I noticed straight out of the box is how good this feels in the hand. It's a good compact size, it's easy to hold on to, and the unit feels solid. Like it feels like I could drop this on the concrete and it would shrug it off no problems. However, I'm not going to test that. One of the things I really appreciate that Bryman put on this multimeter is a fantastic large LCD display and it's got good contrast. It also has a good backlight, well illuminated, and the viewing angles are also quite good too. So it doesn't matter how you orientate this thing, you're going to be able to read that display. Now this multimeter at the time of filming currently retails on Weltron's website for 105 euros. Despite the price point being very good, this multimeter is in fact UL tested. And what does that mean? Well, that means that this multimeter has been independently tested and verified for the uh, CAT ratings it's got here. So 300 volt CAT 4, 600 volt CAT 3, and 1000 volt CAT 2. And we know that the manufacturer is backing it up because it's been UL tested. This multimeter comes with some quite nifty features, which is what attracted me to this unit. So we're going to take a look at, it's got a record function here can measure hertz, uh, has an electric field detector and it also has a button here that with crest on it. We'll have a look at those uh, individually. It also can measure capacitance as well. So to measure hertz you just hold down this button for a second and I'll put the probes into my mains outlet here and you can see it's measuring the hertz there. To go into electric field detection mode we just hold down this button for a second and then the display goes to EF and I've got a mains power cable over here which it's already picking up and you can see the beeps get faster the closer you are to a mains power source. On a lot of cheaper multimeters when you're measuring current either amps or milliamps they won't have fuses and sometimes even if they do have fuses they'll just cheap out and use a, like a 3AG fuse or something like that which is not what you want for a multimeter. So let's take off the back and see what Bryman have used. This is the main fuse for the up to 10 amp current measurement and I'm delighted to say this is a beautiful fuse. It is a branded Busman and this is a fuse that's specifically designed for use in multimeters. These are about $10 per cartridge and you'd typically find uh, high-end brands such as Fluke with this very fuse in here. Delighted to see, we've got another smaller fuse down here and the multimeter is powered by two AAA batteries. Another safety feature this multimeter has is it lets you know if you've got the probes in the right socket. So let's say I was just measuring current with my multimeter and now I want to measure voltage but I forget to change the probes over 
the multimeter is not going to let me forget that I need to change the probes over. It's going to scream at me until I put the probe in the right socket. This avoids you needlessly blowing fuses or potentially the multimeter itself. What does this button labelled Crest do? Well, it's rather a nifty feature that allows the multimeter to take a really quick reading and display the minimum and maximum voltages or amps um, recorded. And it can do this in as little as five microseconds. So to demonstrate this feature, I have got a 0.47 microfarad capacitor here that I'm going to charge up to 5 volts and at the moment I've just got the multimeter reading uh, DC volts and I've manually selected the range so I'll charge up my capacitor and then put it across the probes and we can see there our multimeter is draining the capacitor rather quickly and uh, we can't see a lot of what's going on with regards to minimum and maximum voltages. But I'll put the multimeter into crest mode. And I'll once again charge up my little capacitor. And we can see it's taken a quick snapshot of the peak voltage. So uh, maximum recorded was 4.962. If we press the button again, we go to minimum and we recorded a minimum voltage of 0 0.330 and if we have a look at the manual the record mode is very similar to the crest mode the only difference is uh, how accurate it can record uh, whatever it's trying to measure as well as how long it takes to record that information so and if we have a look at the manual we can see that this is a 6000 count uh, multimeter with really decent accuracy for this price point also. In case you're not familiar with what a 6000 count multimeter means, that is the resolution that the multimeter can display before switching to the next voltage range. So we can see we're reading at the moment 5.071 volts and when we go over 6 volts we can see that the multimeter changes to the next range so now it's displaying 6.55 volts uh, and we've lost a digit off the end however for most average home gamers like myself a 6000 count multimeter is more than enough accurate for most applications now I could go into an in-depth teardown of the multimeter show you the PCB and all the mechanics behind what's going on here However, I've been totally outclassed by EEV Blog, who does a full teardown of several Bryman multimeters. If you want to learn more about what he thinks uh, about the design, the circuitry, and the components used, then go check that video out. Uh, however, in summary, in my own words, after watching his video, I can say that EEV Blog recommends Bryman multimeters. They're a great value for their price point. So that about wraps it up for this video. If you found it useful, please give it a like. It would be much appreciated. Also consider supporting me through Patreon. And also, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll try my best to answer them. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.